After getting pole, could Lewis Hamilton seal the race win? Could Sebastian Vettel starting from P4 do anything to fight back? And could Red Bull clone their way back through the field to get a good result? Find out in today's video. The weather was a lot different to Saturday as on Sunday it was nice and dry and very sunny. And the hot conditions definitely had an effect on this race which Lewis Hamilton went on to win. Hamilton wins from Vettel in 2nd, Raikkonen in 3rd, Daniel Ricciardo in 4th with Valtteri Bottas in 5th. Then it's Gasly 6th, P7 is K-Mag, 8th is Fernando Alonso, 9th is Carlos Sainz with Roman Grosjean in 10th. With Brendan Hartley, Nico Hülkenberg, Esteban Ocon, Sergio Perez, Marcus Eriksson and the two Williams not scoring points. With Stoffel van Dorn, Max Verstappen and Charles Leclerc retiring from the race. But first in this review, let's look at how the top teams got on. After what was a great qualifying result, Mercedes had to execute in the Grand Prix, and they did. Where at the start of the race, they got away well, which was a very important moment for their Grand Prix. Because with Hamilton first and Bottas second for quite a long time, they could hold up the two Ferraris of Vettel and Raikkonen. And for a long time in this race, that's exactly what Valtteri Bottas did to help Lewis Hamilton go on to win the race. So because of that, I don't think Lewis could have been stopped in the Grand Prix, despite at times not having the fastest car. But for Hamilton, when it mattered, he showed up and put in a great performance. For Valtteri, though, for most of the race, he was a perfect team player. As for at least three quarters of this race, he was brilliantly holding up Sebastian Vettel from getting to Lewis Hamilton. But eventually, Sebastian Vettel would get past as Bottas lost his front wing in that confrontation. Because as Vettel passed, Bottas tried to put it down the inside at turn 2 and hit the back of the Ferrari. And then after that, as Daniel Ricciardo tried to pass, he hit him off the track and got a 10 second penalty for that. So not a great end to the race there for Valtteri Bottas, but I think in terms of the race as a team, he did well. As Mercedes go into the summer break, leading both world championships. Ferrari did all they could to try and get the race win, but in the end they didn't. As again, Sebastian Vettel for at least three quarters of this race was held up by the Mercedes of Valtteri Bottas. And of course, with these cars, when you're in the dirty air, it is very hard to pass, especially at this track. There was a time though in the pit stop phase where it looked like Vettel was going to pass Bottas. But traffic got in Sebastian's way and that really prevented him from going after Lewis Hamilton. And then a slow pit stop ended their chances of winning the race. But at least for Vettel, he did get past Bottas into turn 2 eventually at the end of the race. Now I know some people were saying that Vettel was a bit aggressive in defending and getting past Valtteri Bottas, but for me, it was absolutely fine. Yes, it was aggressive, but it is hard racing, you just have to deal with that. I have certainly seen a lot worse in F1, trust me. And with that contact, I will say that Sebastian was lucky not to get a puncture because that would have destroyed his championship hopes. But of course he came through to second with his teammate Kimi Raikkonen finishing in third. Ferrari basically were using Kimi as a tactic to try and upset Mercedes in some kind of way. As Raikkonen did not do a one stop like most teams did, he did a two stop. But that allowed Kimi on fresher tyres at the end of the race to catch up to Vettel and Bottas and eventually get past Bottas in that melee. And I have to say with the pace that both drivers had, I think a podium at least was well deserved. But there is no doubt Ferrari threw away the race win in qualifying where they qualified in 3rd and 4th. If they got a car onto the front row, I think they would have won the race, but of course they didn't. So a lot of thinking to do for Ferrari and Sebastian Vettel going into the summer break. For the Red Bull team, the Hungarian Grand Prix brought about a lot of mixed emotions. First, you have a very angry Max Verstappen after he retired after just 6 laps as the MG UK on his Renault power unit completely failed him. And it just seems at the moment with the Renault power unit that Red Bull's reliability is getting worse and worse and worse. But to be honest, that kind of just describes Renault's power unit. It is so poor right now. For Daniel Ricciardo though, he did well to come back into fourth place. As eventually he got his way past the midfield teams and then started to push up to the back of Kimi Raikkonen and Valtteri Bottas. And after Bottas suffered his front wing damage, Ricardo massively closed up but then had contact. 
as Bottas got understeer and hit the side of Ricardo, but Ricardo caught him up very quickly and then passed him for a deserved fourth place as he deserved to pass Bottas. But considering that Red Bull were expected to be quick here, I do think this weekend is a massive disappointment. This track should suit their car to a T, but it just did not, leaving Red Bull very confused. But now let's look at the Drivers' Championship heading into the summer break. Lewis Hamilton leads the Drivers' Championship by 24 points from Sebastian Vettel, with Kimi Raikkonen quite a distance off in third place. With Bottas in 4th and Ricardo now in 5th pulling away from Verstappen in P6. But of course that's only down to Verstappen's reliability issue as I think Verstappen would have finished ahead of Ricardo. Who knows if it will finish that way after the last race in Abu Dhabi but I'm sure it will change around again. But now let's focus on how the midfield teams did at the Hungarian Grand Prix. McLaren's pace in the Grand Prix was very surprising as Fernando Alonso finished in P8. Because if you look back at their pace on Friday, again this type of pace was not expected. But of course Fernando was brilliant and was my driver of the day. As the pace he showed to perform the overcut in my opinion was spectacular in a car that is not good. And yes their pace in the race was good but still I don't think the car is good. But for Stoffel van Dorn, I do feel desperately sorry for him because he definitely deserved a points finish. He also did the overcut and came out in P9 but then his car broke down. Such a shame as he was going to score some vital points for the McLaren team in their Constructors' Championship battle. Hopefully though at the next race, which is his home race, he will perform again. But at least for McLaren they did score some points. Going into the race, it was looking promising for Renault, but they did not show up. Carlos Sainz started in 5th, but just did not have the pace to be there. Getting passed at the start by his rivals, and throughout the race, he just did not have any pace. And I'm not even sure he deserved P9, because in the race, Grosjean was all over the back of him. And Hulkenberg was P12, as he also did not have any real pace. And considering that this circuit really should suit their car, this is a disappointing result. And it really could be costly at the end of the season if Haas are going to catch them. Especially with the next two races being Spa and Monza where they are going to struggle. So for Renault I do think there are some tough times ahead. This weekend has been very difficult for Force India and their race result has not made it any better. Finishing 13th and 14th as they were nowhere near the points. But if I'm being honest, I think that's the least of the team's worries as they're trying desperately to find a buyer. And hopefully during the summer break they do find one because we still want to see Force India on the grid. I really do hope that Force India can come out of this one looking good. With Sergei Sorokin starting the race last and Lance Stroll starting from the pit lane, it was always going to be difficult. And it turned out to be that way as they finished in P16 and P17. So once again an awful race for Williams. But for Toro Rosso they come away from Hungary with a great result. Pierre Gasly in P6 and his driving all weekend long was fantastic. In practice he was in the top 10, in qualifying in the wet he was brilliant. And in the race he was very comfortable in P6. He managed the car well, he managed the tyres well and did a great job. Definitely one of the drivers of the day. For Brendan Hartley though I do feel a bit sorry for him despite him not having the pace when it mattered. As at the start he was stuck behind Carlos Sainz on the soft tyre and that really affected his race. As it allowed Fernando Alonso and Roman Grosjean on the overcut to pass him. Meaning that he does not get any points but this weekend I would have to say would be his best weekend of the season. As Toro Rosso come away with a good haul of points. After a decent qualifying, Haas also come away with a good haul of points. With K-Mag comfortably finishing P7 behind Pierre Gasly. And Roman Grosjean just finishing behind Carlos Sainz in P10. And I think in this race the pace from the Haas was surprisingly good. I definitely did not think they would be this quick and that they would get a 7th and a 10th. So I think the team should be really happy with this kind of result. As the next two tracks are going to suit their car more than any other of the midfield teams. So expect the Haas to be very, very fast. As they continue to put the pressure on Renault in 4th. 
And lastly is Sauber, who did not have any pace, but did have quite a bit of contact on the first lap. First with Marcus Ericsson hitting the side of Daniel Ricciardo's left front wheel, and Charles Leclerc making contact with one of the four cinders, which caused his retirement. But at least for Marcus Ericsson, he did not suffer any damage, but he did not have any pace as he only finished ahead of the two Williams. As I'm afraid that the aerodynamics on the Sauber is not good enough for them to be good at this circuit. So it's not really a surprise as Sauber have quite a poor weekend. But like Haas in Spa and Monza with that Ferrari power unit, I am expecting a very quick car. Before we end this review though, let's look at the Constructors' Championship. Mercedes now lead from Ferrari by 10 points, with Red Bull of course in a clear third place. Then it's Renault in fourth, with Haas in fifth, having closed the gap to Renault with Force India sixth and McLaren in P7. As I think Force India now might start to fall away. Down at the bottom though, Toro Rosso pull away from Sauber as they're now 10 points clear in eighth place. As Williams still are the basement dwellers. But that is it for the Hungarian Grand Prix and in terms of excitement it wasn't boring but it wasn't that great. I'd say 50-50 and kind of similar to the French Grand Prix at Paul Ricard. We definitely got our controversy and a couple of overtakes but again nothing really special like Hockenheim or Silverstone. But now of course with the summer break it is now time for a rest and a well earned one after 5 races in 6 weeks. It has been very frantic, but I think we do deserve a bit of time away from the racing. Hopefully, though, when we come back at Spa, Formula 1 will strike back again with another exciting race. As soon, we will be entering the climax of the 2018 F1 season. But anyway, guys, that has been it for this video. Don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe for more content like this. Don't forget, guys, I will be back in three hours' time for a live Q&A where you guys can ask me any type of question. So again, if you want to be part of the Q&A, then stick around on the channel three hours after this upload. As well, if you want to join the Chatter HDF1 Discord server, the link to that is down in the description with also my Twitter. Comment down below what you thought of this video and comment down below what did you think of the race at the 2018 Hungarian Grand Prix. Please comment down below what you think about those topics and until next time, it's been me, Chatter HD. Goodbye.